So I have to admit, after our victory over the Portland Trailblazers, where our second unit was the main catalyst for that, with Joffrey Laverne hitting three-pointers and KJ McDaniels just being an athletic freak, I was feeling pretty good. Pretty damn good. And then, then the momentum came back to Denver against the San Antonio Spurs, and Brandon Ingram's offense started getting going a little bit, and I was like, oh, thank you. Because Justin Anderson right now, he doesn't know what the basket even looks like. That's how little he's producing for us offensively. Of course, Moutier is going to just overpower Tony Parker. And while Ingram is not perfect, Joffrey Laverne had himself a hell of a game. And to be honest with you, Joffrey, as a run, jump, and dunk center, has been very good. And he's honestly been on par with Nurkic throughout the season. It's just the main reason that Nurkic is starting over him is I just think he has more potential. I mean, the fact that Joffrey's hitting three-pointers in real life, which gives me the luxury of bumping it up here, is great. But Nurkic has the ability to do this. Just just post up on guys and kind of body him in the post. I don't picture Joffrey ever doing that. So for that reason, of course, that's why Joffrey's not starting. Thad Young being the jump shooter we need. Moutier still doing his thing. We're feeling good. You know, we're in the thick of the eighth seed. It's, it's going pretty well. Well, that is until Moutier decided to get injured. Now, granted, it's only for about a week. But, I mean, you can see from our rotation, you're like, I got Brandon Ingram in the starting lineup now. Like, I'm trying to get guys to play well, and obviously Moutier being in there is the best way to do it. But if he's out, that's going to cause some disruptions. Now, uh, Pierre Jackson will be taking over the starting point guard role. So you know who's going to be our backup point? It's going to be Will Barton. Yes, now the one dude, and I mean the one dude in the comment section who keeps talking about Will Barton and get his wish granted. This is going to be interesting, and uh, perhaps we can learn some things about this team, given that our best player is not there. We're going to start in the second half against the Utah Jazz because, well, if we didn't, then this video wouldn't have happened today, so we're going to have to take it. Brandon Ingram, his offense is starting to get going, so you imagine he's going to make this shot. Or maybe not. But luckily, Nurkic has got him. You know... It's really Nurkic's responsibility to be our best player now. I mean, you could say that should be Gallinari's role. I want to put that on Nurkic, okay? He's supposed to be the co-star of this team that's going to help us grow next to Moutier. And uh, I'm trying with Brandon Ingram, but man, his, uh, it's just not there right now. He's, he's been pretty inconsistent. I mean, for every one jumper, he's going to miss about two, and then he's going to get stripped going to the rim, and then I can't stop Ty Lawson. Now you will see that trying to run an Emmanuel Moutier-esque play without Emmanuel Moutier doesn't exactly work very well. So I said, all right, Nurkic, why don't you try posting up on Rudy Gobert from about 15 feet out? And the results go about as well as you think they would, which means Nurkic just kind of looks like an idiot here. Maybe not my best judgment, but that's okay, you know. That was my bad. That wasn't Nurkic's fault. I didn't... I didn't have a good read on that one, you know? And then um, Gordon Hayward, his perm, making Brandon Ingram uh, look a little silly on defense. Perhaps I should have had Justin Anderson in there for that one. But it's okay because Thad Young got blocked under the basket when you could say he should have made that one. So now all we got to do is play a little bit of defense because I can already feel Utah getting some of that momentum. We can't allow that to happen, right? Well, now Nurkic is jumping around... By that I mean I am, and as a result, I get dunked on by Derek Favors. So without Moutier, it's not going very well right now. So at a certain point I said, alright Gallinari, get in the damn game. Okay, I didn't want to have to start him. But now, look at this, Will Barton in the game. This is his opportunity to finally, I don't know, gain some minutes. I get a little overconfident with Nigel Hayes. Is it the best idea to take that shot with the deficit we're in? Maybe, maybe not, but I did it anyway, so we can't do nothing about it now. And then, that play that I just ran for Gallinari, I got a little happy with it. I tried it again. I should not have made that pass. That was a... That was just a bad pass, okay? I'm making everybody look bad. Will Barton's gonna get the credit for the turnover. That was my turnover, okay? Not a good game for us. Not a good game for me. KJ in the game now, dribbling the ball. But Barton... You see, Will Barton, perhaps he actually... No, he's not. Okay, I'm not even going to troll you for a second acting like Will Barton's going to find a spot back in this rotation. He'll find a spot in somebody else's rotation when I trade the guy. As for what we need to trade him for, well, we'll find that out as we go. 
We didn't play defense there. We're down 13 points without Moutier. Nurkic, please get us back in this game. Or not. So, without Emmanuel Moutier, it was a, uh... I don't know if it was eye-opening, although that was pretty damn eye-opening, seeing Nurkic's life flash before his eyes as he got dunked on by Alec Burks, who I still believe is a very underrated player in the NBA, by the way. You can say we didn't look good, okay? Now, of course, Nigel Hayes, he... I think Nigel Hayes's I don't want to say emergence, because... I mean, he was the fifth pick in the draft, so... <laughs> Newsflash, the top five picks pretty good. Um... I think he opens up some off, uh, some options for us, uh, especially given that Moody is injured now. Ingram, I'm trying to get him some more offense. Okay, got himself to the free throw line. I like that. That's pretty good. We're down 13. This can perhaps get the comeback going, or he can barely hit the rim. Okay. Um, Justin Anderson's really not giving us offense out of the small forward spot. Brandon Ingram is not either at the moment. Our small forward um, position is a one-man show, and it's Gallinari, Gallinari, and then Gallinari again. I don't know. Maybe a Will Barton for a scoring small forward is in the works. Maybe it's not. Maybe I just thought of that on the fly. I don't know, but I know one thing. Nigel Hayes is pretty damn decent. The guy just gets to the free throw line for me again here. And unlike Brandon Ingram, he's going to hit some free throws for us. So as I was mentioning earlier... Game without Moutier, we didn't look good, okay? We were, uh, I don't even want to say we're overmatched. I think we're pretty in line with Utah talent-wise. And this really sums it up right here. You see that? Guy wide open down the floor. And it just goes out of bounds. So we lose to the Utah Jazz without Emmanuel Moutier. Pretty damn convincingly. But, um, weirdly enough, this game may have been a good thing because it can reveal... Not really reveal, it, it, it shows a few trends that have been developing long enough to where I can say, alright, we gotta address this. Justin Anderson ain't giving us no damn offense, okay? He was pretty decent for us last season, this year, I just, it doesn't happen. Gallinari's the only small forward we got, so maybe I should insert Gallinari into the starting lineup, especially with Moody out. And, given Nigel Hayes' performance lately, I think we'll be okay with Gallinari not being our instant offense because Hayes can be our instant offense. It's a match made in heaven, right? I don't know. 